Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon. My name is Galoran Turan, and I'm the General Manager of Advocacy at the Global Carbon Capture and Storage Institute. The Global CCS Institute is an international think tank backed by governments, businesses and NGOs. Our headquarters are in Melbourne, Australia, and we have offices in five other locations around the world, including London, where I'm based, uh, Washington DC, Brussels, Tokyo and Beijing. We have a diverse membership with seven to six members and more than 30 staff globally. I wanted to start by discussing uh, what CCS is and how it can help meet our climate targets. CCS um, is a set of technologies that capture carbon dioxide from large emission sources or from the atmosphere and safely stores them underground. CCS can help meet our climate targets in a number of ways. Firstly, it can help dramatically reduce emissions from large stationary emission sources such as power plants, including both gas and coal-fired power stations, and also from heavy industry such as cement and steel. Thus, it can help reduce uh, the current emissions, the flow of emissions that go into the atmosphere. Secondly, um, it can also help with the existing historic CO2, uh, the stock of CO2 that's in the atmosphere by removing it and, and storing underground, thus leading to negative emissions through technologies such as direct air capture and bioenergy with CCS. And finally, it can help with the production of clean hydrogen, uh, which is a fuel when combusted uh, produces only energy and, and uh, water vapor, which can then further be used to decarbonize industry, home heating and transportation. It's the, this versatility of CCS, the fact that it can be applied across a number of industries, but also the fact that it can be used to reduce both the current, the flow of emissions into the atmosphere, as well as the historic, the stock of emissions that are already in the atmosphere that uh, make it such a unique uh, climate mitigation tool. We need carbon capture and storage to uh, meet our climate targets and uh, get to, to climate neutrality by the middle of the century. This was indeed the conclusion of the groundbreaking IPCC 1.5 report released two years ago in 2018, um, the report showed conclusively that it will be extremely challenging, if not outright impossible, to get to net zero emissions without CCS. Indeed, in all four of the pathways that you can see on this chart, there is carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere, and three of the pathways include significant amounts of, of uh, CCS. This conclusion is mirrored by other uh, reputable organizations and reports such as the IEA and the Energy uh, Transition Commission. As the number of countries and companies committing to climate targets and committing to become net zero are increasing, so is the interest and investment in CCS. Uh, in 2020, we saw the number of facilities uh, in the CCS pipeline uh, go up, increase for the third year in a row. Uh, plans for some more than 30 facilities, large scale CCS facilities have been announced since 2017. Currently, we have around the world 20 large scale facilities, CCS facilities capturing with a capacity to capture and store more than 40 million tons of CO2 per annum. Uh, CCS has been around since the 1970s and to date more than 260 million tons of CO2 has been captured and safely stored underground. However, in order to reach climate targets as those outlines in IES sustainable development scenario, at the Institute we estimate that we will need some 2000 facilities capturing each capturing at least a million ton per annum by 2040. Thus, from where we are today, where we have 20 operating facilities, we'll need to uh, gear up to scale up to having 2000 facilities in the next 20 years. Uh, a scaling up of factor of 100 will be needed. It's certainly challenging, but we certainly believe that it is doable. 
this is the map of uh, the geographic spread of all CCS facilities around the world, including large scale facilities, as well as those that are smaller in scale in terms of demonstration and, and pilot projects. Um, when we look at the CCS facilities, we see that US leads the pack. Uh, it has the largest, the biggest number of CCS facilities. There are 10 large scale facilities in, in US at the moment, and there are um, 18 more under development. This is due to the favorable uh, environment for CCS in, in the US, including supportive uh, policies such as the 45Q tax credit for CO2 that's captured and stored, um, as well as the commercial opportunities that are underpinned uh, by enhanced oil recovery. The Gulf region uh, is also in a strong position in terms of uh, carbon capture and storage. Saudi Arabia has embraced the circular carbon economy and already has one operational CCS facility in gas processing. The other country with the operational large scale CCS facility is UAE, where the Al Raida plant is located. This plant is unique in the sense that it is the only large scale CCS facility on a steel plant around the world. Uh, Al Raida phase two is under development, uh, so there are expansion plans in the UAE, and we are aware that there are plans to pursue CCS in other countries in the region, including, of course, in Oman, uh, as well as in Qatar and Bahrain. When we look around the world, the other countries with operational large scale facilities are Canada, uh, Brazil, Norway, uh, China and Australia. This chart shows um, large scale CCS facilities by the different applications. On the very left column are the operational facilities and one can see that these facilities are overwhelmingly in natural gas processing and in fertilizer production uh, as these are applications where that are simpler and lower cost in terms of CCS. Um, these applications have, these processes have CO2 uh, separation inherently built in, in their production processes. We also have two coal fired power plants with, with CCS. As we move further to the right, uh, and look at those facilities under development, one can see the diversity of, of applications increasing. In fact, we're looking forward to having the first uh, of its kind large scale CCS facilities applied to waste to energy, uh, to cement production, uh, to gas fired power generation, as well as direct air capture, demonstrating once again um, the versatility of carbon capture and storage uh, as a key climate mitigation technology. Hubs and clusters are um, quickly emerging as the preferred business model for developing CCS chains as opposed to point source to point uh, storage, uh, um, point storage models. Hubs and clusters involve uh, connecting multiple emission sources uh, through a shared uh, transport infrastructure to a shared storage facility. This is a preferred business model because it reduces interdependency risk and it enables therefore different parties to uh, in the CCS chain to concentrate on what they do best within the chain. For example, an industrial plant will capture emissions, but it will not have to build or, or uh, run uh, CO2 pipelines or storage facilities, which is not its core competency. Hubs and clusters, of course, also enable um, scaling up of infrastructure and thus lead to uh, lower unit costs. There are at least a dozen uh, hubs and clusters in development around the world, and most notably uh, the Langship project in Norway, uh, which the Norwegian government recently announced that it's going to give the green light to get financial support to uh, in, in September. So what do we need to do uh, in order to accelerate uh, the deployment of CCS, which is a critical climate tool? 
At the Global CCS Institute, we identify three key high-level policy priorities for governments that can help accelerate the deployment of CCS. Firstly, uh, this is about creating conditions for investment, in other words, creating the business case. In order to do that, we need to put um, the value on uh, carbon dioxide emission reductions. And at the Institute, we're indifferent as to the mechanism of how this can happen, whether it happens through uh, carbon pricing, through cap and trade, or whether through carbon taxes or tax credits, as long as um, emission externality is being priced in. And of course, in the early stages of CCS development for early CCS projects, direct government support will be beneficial, such as in the form of, of, of grants. Secondly, um, governments also have a major role to play, we believe, in terms of facilitating development of CO2 infrastructure. Governments can coordinate and underwrite uh, development of industrial hubs and clusters and uh, further qualified storage sites. And finally, there is still a number of outstanding regulatory and policy issues that have not been resolved around the world. For example, cross-country transport of CO2 for storage um, or uh, long-term liability issues and where they should sit. So um, governments have a role to put in place robust policy frameworks in order to create uh, the um, investment uh, conditions for the private sector to go ahead and, and develop CCS uh, value chains. So to conclude, um, when it comes to CCS, we have the technology, it's been around since the 1970s, we have ample safe storage around the world and the costs are not insurmountable. Uh, what we need is, is more ambition. We believe that the next 10 years will prove decisive. Um, if we are to meet our climate targets, these policy priorities outlined here must be enacted upon with uh, deliberate speed. Thank you. <laughs>